presentation. Uh, the coronavirus is uh, one of the saddest, saddest story humanity had to live. Uh, since we are all confined in our home, we could all become like retired people. But I feel, uh, um, but I feel that because you are all connected to this presentation, uh, I can tell that you want to come back uh, more confident, stronger, and with new ideas for your practice. So I will. Uh, I really hope that I can uh, transmit um, everything I can, and that you will uh, enjoy this uh, next uh, hour together. Um, so first of all, this is the situation. We why are we all in front of our screen? It's because if uh, like this baby, you wanted to see someone, you would go back directly to your place. So this is our situation now. Uh, go back to your room. Uh, let me introduce myself. So uh, I am Dr. Emric Auderold. Um, I am a member of the Genius Team, and I will explain to you what it is exactly. This is uh, this is my family. I don't know if I can move this. Yes, I can move this a little bit like this. All right. No, not good idea. All right. Uh, so this is my family. My wife on the top uh, here. Uh, my dad was no longer with us anymore. Uh, my older daughter, who's uh, in a hospital, she's a, a med student, and uh, she's working in a hospital with old people nowadays. It's very difficult for her because she sees people dying every day. Uh, and uh, my two young kids. Uh, I studied in the States, in St. Louis University, uh, where Engel invented orthodontics. That was there. He, uh, it was uh, 103 years ago, basically, the first bracket came out. And uh, Dr. Charles Tweed uh, is, uh, was very influent in this uh, part of America. And so I've been trained in the Tweed technique. Uh, this is my office. Um, Paris today, maybe like uh, all your cities, is very, very empty about no cars. What's great, I don't know if you experienced that, but uh, we can hear the birds. Uh, it smells good. Uh, there is a silence. There are some really, really good things about the confinement, I think. Um, and uh, uh, the few things we can enjoy, we have to do so. So my office is here. My office is empty as uh, the Paris street, unfortunately. But this is the way to go. Uh, I'm every day, every day, uh, attending a, a webinar like this one about many, many topics. And uh, as I said, uh, I'm trying to become uh, stronger and more confident for my uh, coming back in, uh, in a few weeks from now. I hope in Paris we'll come back to our office in about three weeks, but not three to four weeks. It's going to be, uh, again, a long time. I'm, uh, I don't practice in Israel. I'm teaching there. Um, every two months, I give a lecture there about uh, self lighting brackets. Okay, so this is the genius team. What is the genius team? The genius team is the team that uh, co-invent the genius bracket and concept. Like we can see here, there were there are four orthodontists and uh, myself, uh, Dr. Medina, who gave a lecture uh, a few days ago or in a few uh, yes and Dr. Catherine Lasvanias and Michelle Asayak, also Charlie El Kubi and Wai family, and um, a bracket engineering, uh, uh, who's not a doctor, he's an engineer, Albert Rizvela from U United States, who worked very much on the demon bracket a few years ago. Uh, and uh, it was uh, five years ago, only uh, the genius bracket came out, uh, the prototype, and the first lecture also was in, uh, in um, in Taiwan. So enough with me, I would like to start with the presentation. Uh, this is uh, where all the genius brackets are sold. Um, so the big question is, uh, what is your choice for class two correction in permanent dentition? If I ask the question, if you are really 200 attending this lecture, I probably have like uh, 100 different answers, I'm sure. 
Um, why is that? It's because it's very challenging. There are so many appliances that are available, so many concepts and techniques. It, it really creates a confusion to make a choice. And the second reason is that in the scientific literature, um, also there's not, a, um, it's difficult to find a consensus about what to use in what case. There are some, there are some tendencies, some trends that I would like to share with you now. So what happens in the literature for class two correction? The topics are debated and sometimes consensus are found, but the consensus that are found most of the time, it's not in the literature. It comes from clinical trials. So in the literature, they just explain to you what scientifically works and what scientifically cannot be proved to work. But most of the time, it's from clinical trials that people end up to choose some uh, appliance. And uh, the class two topics that are frequently uh, debated are the following. The age of treatment, the concept or technique, you call it as you want, and then short and long-term effects, the treatment duration, should we use fixed or removable? If removable, should we ask the patient to wear them at night or night and evening or all the time except when eating? There's also a topic that is frequently debated is the design of the appliance. So it makes a lot. I will come back to this uh, slide, sorry. Um, makes a lot of topics. And as I said, it's very difficult to make a choice from the literature and from everything. The class two correction consensus is the one. Uh, it was easy to say for everyone that we are trying to find a concept to correct a class two that will bring efficiency, uh, that uh, will enhance mandibular growth, and that is stable as far as correction, okay? This is a consensus. Uh, maybe that sounds a little bit stupid saying so, but this is the only thing, really the only three things everybody will agree on. And there's somewhat a consensus after many debates about this. First of all, starting age, should be around right before or around puberty and we'll see later what we call stage ca3 and ca4 many of you are aware of what it is but i will um, i will remind what it is because today today this is the most reliable um way of um, assessing uh, where uh, where a patient are, is what stage the patient is uh, uh, compared to his growth spurt. So here it is, the, it comes from Bacchetti, it's not recent, it's quite old actually, and it shows that mandibular growth spurt will be between CS3 and CS4, and you can of course watch those uh, vertebras on your uh, profile x-ray, it's very easy to, uh, uh, to, to determine what age the patient is, the growth age the patient is, and uh, it's a very good to start when the patient is um, at the CS3. So you, there's a lot of chance you may hit the growth spurt to correct your class two. So the consensus is about the starting age. Uh, the concept is most of the concept, they go towards uh, position the mandible forward. The duration of the class two correction, and when I'm talking about class two, we are I'm talking about a real class two, which would be between five to seven millimeters, right? Okay, so it should last a year to a year and a half. And sometimes it can be shorter, but if it's shorter, it means that stabiliz stabilization will be longer. Um, fixed or removable, there's not consensus, but there's a, a consensus about most important is that uh, the appliance is in the mouth of the patient uh, most of the time, which is about minimum time, 20 hours a day. And the uh, type of appliance is a big question. What are we going to choose, right? I will end up with uh, the solution I've chosen for my office and I will try to share it with you. But of course, there's, there are many things. So um, if we take this, uh, this appliance, the Herbst appliance, which I use for a very long time, the Herbst appliance well, will meet all the criteria 
that were list, listed uh, before. Uh, you can use it at um, before the growth spurt or at the growth spurt, but you can use it independently of all permanent teeth erupted, which is a good thing. It positions the mandible forward. It can be more, it can be worn more than a year, and it's a fixed appliance. So this appliance fixed all the criteria. The reason I don't use it anymore, to be honest, I've been using it for 10 years and I had a wonderful result with it, the, because um, the appliance installation requires a very long and difficult appointment, uh, a lot of sweat. Um, it's, uh, it's not aesthetic, it's not comfortable. So what happens is that parents and patients are not happy with it. Um, there are some countries like, for example, United States, where, and maybe Germany also, where the appliance is quite uh, popular. So people are aware of this uncomfort and that the appliance is not aesthetic, so that would be, that would be okay. But for example, in France, um, it was very difficult for parents to accept this kind of appliance in the mouth of their children. Also, it's very fragile. And, um, and because it's very fragile, when a patient comes for an emergency, sometimes the emergency visit will last more than half an hour. So quite difficult, right? So after about 10 to 15 years of using the herbs appliance, I decided to quit. Now, if I look around me, uh, and it's true that I would speak uh, mainly for uh, Europe, and I don't know how, really how it is in, uh, in, uh, in Asia, for example. I know that in the United States, it's very close to what you use to Europe. Uh, these are, <coughs> sorry, these are the, um, the actual trends. Um, actual trends, many people are still using a removable uh, appliance like a bionator, uh, an appliance that is worn uh, at night and maybe a little bit in the evening that will position the mandible forward. Um, and also there are removable appliances that can be worn 22 hours a, a day where you get, in my opinion, better results. These are, uh, well, the Invisalign, you can see on the upper right corner of your screen, the Invisalign, Invisalign Mandible Advancement uh, appliance, which becomes more and more popular, more, more, more and more popular, especially in the United States, and the uh, Twin Block appliance, because actually the, both of them, I mean, the Invisalign Mandible Advancements with the wings and the Twin Block uh, works in the same principle. The difference is... Uh, between the two is that one is made of plastic, the other one is made of uh, acrylic. Um, the main, I'm talking about plastic correction. Uh, actual trend with fixed appliance is um, using uh, elastics, of course, and wait for the last space of treatment to be with rectangular wire so that uh, patients can wear heavy elastics or forces. And um, what I like personally is this last trend with fixed appliance, a treatment start, using shorties, I'm going to speak about it right now, and also using heavy elastics with carrier motion or what we call the genius, uh, the genius sagittal first, which I'm going to explain also in detail in, uh, in a few minutes. So this is what I like. And, and I want to share, that I want to share. Uh, I, I want to share with you that I like to work with fixed appliance and elastics, and I like to correct the class two at the beginning of treatment. So that this is why the, actually the presentation um, is uh, called Sagittal First. So there are two ways of doing it with very light elastics, I will show you, and very, very heavy elastics. Uh, obviously you cannot use the same design of a fixed appliance uh, with, uh, with brackets or whatever uh, if you use uh, very light elastics or heavy elastics. Let's start first, please, with the very light elastics. Um, as you can see here on this photograph, I'm using uh, a very, sh uh, what we call shorties. We call them shorties because they are short range elastics. They go from three to five or uh, upper fours to lower six. Uh, for the class two, for the class three, you just have to reverse. Actually, it's exactly the same principle. Um, and uh, as you can see here, you got a divide, a round wire. I'm going to speak about it. When to use and what are, what can you, what you can expect from those, uh, this kind of um, 
uh, appliance. And I, I just want to just to look at the one detail, see there's a rotation of the bike speed. It is a mesolingual rotation. And it's true that the elastics is going uh, in the opposite direction of the correction of the rotation. But anyway, it will work because the strength of the wires will be um, bet, uh, heavier, if I may say, than the force of the elastics. So this was, this is, yeah, this was because uh, she's uh, done with her treatment now. Eleonor, when she was 11 years old, this is a class two division two, which is very, very, very frequent in France. We have a lot of this in Europe. Um, I'm not sure you have that much in Asia. Um, I don't know who's listening, maybe, I'm sure you, you, you've seen some. And uh, in those uh, situation, you can see some uh, class two division two, of course, class two relationship and very, very deep bite. What you cannot see, I want to tell you because you cannot see because of the deep bite. Here, the, uh, the, 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 the gum on the lower central right incisor is not at the same level as the lower left incisor. I will tell you from the beginning because you will see at the end, okay? There's a little bit of crowning the lower arch. Uh, our main concern is correct the class two and correct the divide, of course, okay? So let's see what we're going to do with shorties. So we start the shorties elastics, very, very light force. As you can see, it's uh, 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 only two ounces, okay? Uh, short range from three to five, but here uh, there there is there is a mistake actually because because of the deep bite I should have asked the patient to wear them from upper first premolar to lower six to open the bite. Okay, so this was my mistake. It worked anyway, uh, which is good news. Um, but since uh, I wanted to tell you my mistake. So from the very first uh, wires, 014 Genius Thermal Ultra. I won't go into details with the wires and everything and the sequence of wire because I don't have the time to do everything. Uh, there are lectures that uh, are organized uh, most of the time, uh, with, uh, which last one day, uh, and that will cover every aspect of the Genius technique. This is just one small part of it. Um, Okay, so we are here, as you can see, in with a class one relationship. Um, and the goals with the shorties is, is to get the class one in six to nine months. Uh, this is not always the case. In the worst case, if the patients wear elastics, in the worst case, you will correct between 50 to 75% of the class two in the first semester of treatment, in the first six months of treatment. But here we are, here we are. so there, there was a sequence of wire, that's why the wire are no longer round wire now, they are rectangular um, um, thermal ultra wires. And uh, you can see there, there is a space between the lateral incisors and the canine. Um, there, there could be many, many reasons for that. Uh, and uh, I, I, can see, I can see that some of you are raising hands to ask questions and, and the, from what I understood, uh, questions will be uh, uh, will be at the end. So uh, please write them somewhere, and I will uh, answer all of your questions. Uh, I promise. Um, so the patient has worn elastics 22 hours a day uh, for six to nine months, and here is in class one, which, which doesn't mean it stops elastics. I will ask the patient to keep on wearing elastics at night to stabilize the class two correction. Um, you can see from the le lower left side uh, corner of the screen that there, uh, at the beginning there were some bite blocks, but as soon as soon as the other jet is uh, small, it's possible to uh, bond some anterior bite blocks, which are of course best to correct the deep bite than posterior bite blocks, because posterior bite blocks actually it's the, the opposite. They will tend to intrude a little bit of molars but anyway, because of the leveling of the arches with the wires, there is less, uh, there is less um, deep bite than at the beginning. Okay, uh, did I say it all about everything? Yes, I said it all. Okay, let's keep on with this case. So this was the beginning, and here is. Some other 
patient at the end, as I told you, see there was this gap difference, but that were that was already uh, at the beginning that we couldn't see because of the deep bite. And the patient is a nice class one with his permanent retainers, uh, top and bottom at the end of treatment. And it's been a, a year and a half treatment. So if I want to sum up with short, is, short elastics, um, I will use them since day one or uh, when the two arches are bonded. Actually, what I do in my office, I will bond first the, the upper arch, I will bond second a month after the lower arch, and then I will start the elastics at the, when I bond the lower arch on the, on the second appointment. Um, so as I said, it's a, this, this is a nice ID. Um, if you want to open the bite, if there's a deep bite, uh, then you would use the elastics rather, of course, class two from upper fours to lower six to open the bite. Uh, <clears throat> and if it's the opposite, if you have an open, not an open, open bite tendency or upper incisor protrusion or hyperdivergence, then you would rather use your elastics from upper threes to lower fives, which makes sense. And I would use basketball elastics for the first six months. When I get to 18 by 25 thermal ultra, then I will use baseball elastics. You can find those, of course, with uh, all your, um, uh, your uh, commercial people that will sell the brackets and elastics. And uh, they are a little bit, a little bit, uh, they are three ounces. And uh, I will hook them from upper threes to lower six to finish with the class two correction. Okay, so of course, between uh, the 014 and the 18 by 25, there is one intermediate wire which could be 18 by 18 or a 14 by 25. So, if I want to speak about the advantages of shorties, actually, there are many. I would like to speak about it. First of all, let's talk about the compliance. Okay, compliance is always a big issue in uh, in orthodontics, especially in our country. I live in Paris. Young people are very, um, teenagers are very difficult. Um, they are uh, uh, they are not docile. They are they are kind of rebels. So they are Latin also. So compliance is a big issue, and that's important for me to have good compliance. So compliance. It's been proved is always best at the beginning of treatment. Um, as they say, compliance is the younger the patient, the better. So when you use elastics at the beginning of treatment, instead of at the end heavy elastics, the patient is younger, of course, on a two year treatment, for example. So you, you have better chance for compliance. And also, in case you need, in case you need heavy elastics at the end, the patient will be ready for them because he, he would have won the short and light elastics from the beginning. So he's used to those elastics. It belongs to the treatment, to this day-to-day -day life. So huge advantage for compliance. Uh, also, there are. This is not compliance here. This is growth. I'm sorry. Um, the short is. Since you use them from the beginning, you have more chance to hit the growth spurt. Okay. Uh, if you, if we talk about permanent dentition patients, uh, sometimes they have the la the last teeth to erupt. They erupt at the age thirteen or fourteen years old, so they are already old. So you have to use elastics from the beginning if you want if you want to have a chance to hit the growth spurt. And you'll have it because of long-term elastic wear. Uh, start elastics when the teen is young, okay? Another other advantages is stabilization. So uh, let's imagine that uh, you used a functional appliance and you bond the brace. You, you went from a class two to a class one and you bond the braces, the brackets. If you don't use elastics from the beginning, then you will there are some chances that your patient would relapse. So the short, is, the short elastics, as I've shown, are a way of stabilizing the class one 
that you get from a previous functional phase. Another thing, uh, let's say you are in a class one relationships, then, and you have a slight class two, then you uh, bond some byte tubules, the byte tubules will open the byte and you lose the class one and your patient will come back in the slide class two. Then the short elastics will help the patient to keep his class one after you use the byte tubules. I hope I make myself clear. Uh, it's a treatment. You use some uh, shorties using the using of shorties is a way to simplify your treatment because you get rid of the most challenging problem. Uh, if you are genius users, you may know that aligning the teeth, getting the right talk is very, very easy with the genius bracket and wires, with the genius technique. The class two corrections is another challenge. Uh, and you will get rid of it if you start correcting it from the beginning. It will, getting rid of it means that you will uh, more chance to avoid extraction surgery or the use of forces. And then if you get rid of the most challenging project problem, which is the class two, um, at the end of treatment, you will, you will be able to spend the good energy on finishing procedures to have the most beautiful case instead of wasting energy trying to correct the class two. Shorties, short elastics belong to a concept of sagittal first experience in orthodontics. Correct sagittal anterior posterior relationships from the beginning. To, sum, to, to make a summary, the advantages are compliance, growth, and stabilization. Well, if you don't like shorties, why such a sentence? Because I met some practitioners that have this uh, fear of using elastics on very thin wires, the start wires, the, the 014. Uh, I never had any problem and I've treated hundreds of patients with this technique. But I, sometimes it's difficult to overcome fear, right? Well, what are your choices? What are your choices if you don't want to use shorties? Well, you can wait for the last stages of treatment with rectangular wires and use heavy elastics. The, there are some disadvantages, as I said, because um, you have, your patient is older, is less compliant. This is the last uh, uh, stages of treatment. And suddenly you would use big elastics and that could hurt also. That could be that could, that, that could be a pain problem. Uh, from Spain, from Spain, we have learned which is called bevel by blocks, which are uh, a bike block built with uh, glass yonomer that you can see here in blue. So you have one upper uh, bite block, one lower bite block, and the they are um, they are used the way um, in order to get um, forward position of the mandible. The mandible will slide forward because of those upper and lower bite blocks, and help the patient to put, to position his mandible forward to uh, to get a class two correction from the big. Some advantages over the carrier motion, as I will show you. Let's talk about first carrier motion. Carrier motion is great, it's been invented in Spain, in Barcelona, by Dr. Uh, Carrier, the father, now the, the son uh, took over. They are very, very clever people. And uh, thank to them, we have this concept. Uh, I don't know if you know about it. This, I, I think it's, it's very popular in Europe. It's, uh, I think it becomes popular now in the States. 
uh, not as much as in Europe, but uh, it's very, 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 very nice. I also use it, by the way, I use this kind of concept, by the way, to correct my class tools before Invisalign patient, uh, before treating a patient with Invisalign. And uh, <clears throat> this is the way it works. So you can see on the right image, uh, the carrier motion on the maxillary arch bonded from uh, upper canines to molar. There's a ball joint on the molar tube and uh, there is the lower anchorage here. I, I will show you everything in detail in a minute. So uh, the carrier motion works this way. So what I'm showing you here, both pictures are the same patient. Okay, I know it doesn't look the same <laughs> because uh, uh, there's only been like three uh, bonding attachment, like the carrier on the top and uh, and this one. And you can see there's a class two, there's a class one, and also you can see that the bite is corrected. And you saw also you can also see that the 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 crowding has a has been resolved with just the correction of the class one. Uh, so this is the same patient, right? Uh, so sagittal first is class two correction. It uh, it corrects uh, one millimeter per month, and uh, it's used at the start of treatment. And uh, um, how does it work? The concept is the following: you got heavy interarch elastics from the beginning, anchorage at the mandibular arch. I will show you. And the effects you get is distillation of upper canine spicuspids, spicuspids sorry, and molars. Um, you got a rotation of the upper first molar, which helps you getting the class one, which is very, very important. And of course, you also have for team patients, a mandibular forward repositioning, which could be growth. Uh, in some patients, it's growth. In some other patients, it's what we call repositioning, repositioning between uh, the condyle and uh, in the, the, the clinoid cavity. This is a simplified variation of the carrier appliance that uh, has been given me for a very dear friends of, uh, of mine. Um, it's not coming from my office. So this, this would uh, replace the carrier that you can see on the lower right image. It can be bonded directly on the teeth and it's, uh, but uh, there are two problems with this kind of, uh, of um, appliance. First of all, you have to spend, you have to take an impression and spend time to fabricate it or ask someone to fabricate it for you. And uh, there's no ball joint in the molar, so there's no rotation of the molar. And we all know that rotation of the molar will help you in, in getting a, a, a nice uh, settled class one. So I, I've shown you the carrier motion. Now let's go from carrier to genius. So what we did, um, uh, I'm sorry, but to, so the, the, the Spanish and the French will recognize on the left side, the Spanish omelet and on the right side, the French omelet is about, so it would be the same result, uh, but it has a little different taste. So let's, let's see some cases now to see how we correct the class two in a few months to start with. With the carrier, uh, and, and, and with, no, not with the carrier, by the way, sorry, with the genius sagittal first. So, this is uh, again a class two division two uh, um, with uh, some um, retrusion of the upper incisors and deep bite. But of course, you can see that the patient is, on, is in a class two relationship. Uh, here, uh, besides the class two relationship, we have a canine that is uh, impacted. Uh, and basically to find enough space uh, to, uh, for the canine, we have all to get a class one relationship on the left side, but also, of course, on the right side. So let, let's, look at the, let's look at the left side, please. So you can see we have a class two relationship, which is about 3.5 millimeters, four millimeters, depends how you measure. Uh, and let's look at the effect of, of the let, yes, I'm sorry. This is what we want to. Um, I'm going to come back. Okay, so the diameter of the baby canine is not enough for us to have uh, the real canine, the, the permanent canine, into uh, the arch. So, of course, we have, got, have to get a class one relationship. Uh, and for that reason, we need to move back the premolars and the molars. So, um, 
this is a way uh, to do. Let me check with this. Sorry. All right. So uh, this is the genitus sagittal first modified from the carrier. As you can see, uh, we had some. Uh, we we asked the patient to wear class two elastic. You cannot see the button that is on the lower uh, second molar here on the on the picture, but there's only one genius bracket on the first premolar, one uh, tube on the first molar, and the patient has one elastics. And the result is a class two correction and the deep bite correction without any other things than. Uh, the, the genius sagittal first for four months. Uh, in my opinion, the correction of the debite is a, comes from the clockwise um, mandible cl clockwise mandibular rotation because of the class two elastics. And uh, from what you can see, also from the uh, purple and the uh, green. Uh, uh, the green line is that you always have to try uh, to get some hypercorrection of your class two. So um, what's nice is that in office fabrication, uh, which is just two brackets and a wire, allows to vary the length of the genius sagittal first uh, without in an important stock of carrier motion in your office. You just will do it in office. That's very, very, very easy. Uh, another case. Here, you can see the class two relationship on the right side, only the class one is left. So we need to drive back uh, this segment upper right segment distally about four millimeters again um, because the class two is asymmetrical the midlines are off okay and also because there is a deep bite because of the class two relationship and look there's a difference of level uh, of between the upper right canine and the uh, upper left uh, canine this is not okay this this you can call it if you wish a kent of the occlusal plane but this kent of occlusal plane is not is not a skeletal asymmetry uh, it's very easy to understand in the on the class one side the left side the caspids are going into the embrasure uh, of the lower teeth so they have erupted more on the class two side which is uh, uh, on the right side the teeth uh, have been stopped into the eruption uh, with the caspid of the low, lower teeth that's why we have this feeling of uh kent of occlusal plane but the this there is no special wire to use or anything just correcting as you you were going to watch it just correcting the class two relationship on the right side will get the teeth into proper vertical position symmetrical with the left side and uh, nothing particular to do so here is the genius sagittal first uh, so you can see one genius crystal bracket on the canine and two molar tubes on the molars. That's all there is. There is a, a wire, there's some spring. There is also a stop. Uh, and I will explain to you everything in a minute. And as you can uh, see easily, we, we, we could correct the class two. We have a class one relationship now on the right side, okay? This is the other side. It's not because we have used uh, uh, only on the right side that we have lose the class one on the left side. So a symmetrical uh, use of the genius sagittal first is uh, very easy. Let's look 
at the final result. The final result, uh, so you see uh, that the mean lines are better. Uh, mean lines are better. Why is that? Uh, it's, there, there are two reasons for that. There are mainly two reasons for that. You know, the elastics works reciprocally. It works on the uh, upper right side. So it will move a little bit the upper midline to the center. And it also works to reposition the manifold forward, especially on the right side, which will help the lower midline to go to the left. It means to the center. Um, also, you will look at the vertical position of the canine on the right side. Now it's very symmetrical to the left side. Why is that? Just because of the class two correction, just because of the class one. And I will come back to see that the upper teeth now are not against the caspid, they are in the embrasures uh, of the, the lower teeth. That's why it could be corrected very easily. There's no uh, uh, wire, special wire with uh, whatever uh, uh, Kent occlusal plane correction. Uh, I never use those. They are, uh, um, uh, to be honest, for me, there is no. Uh, such thing as, uh, uh, except in syndromes, in certain syndromes, uh, 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 real skeletal asymmetry of the maxilla. Uh, when you watch those, it's only a problem uh, that comes from uh, an occlusal relationship that uh, brought this evolution. Um, anyway, uh, so. Here, now the description of the sagittal first. First of all, first thing, you have to take an impression of your lower teeth. First appointment, you take an impression of the lower teeth. Then, second appointment, you give, you, you bond, sorry, the brackets, the genius bracket on the canine, could be crystal, could be metal, it's the same, of course, and the tubes on the molars. We are still in the second appointment. We'll use a segment of wire. I will talk about the segment of wire later with the spring. The spring is uh, almost no activation of the spring. And you give the patient, still on the second appointment, the uh, plastic retainer, if I may say, the plastic mandible tray plastic tray that will be used, that will be the anchorage. And the patient wears 22 hours per day, the plastic, lower mandible plastic retainer with the elastics, which is heavy elastic. And that's how we get the sagitt genius sagittal first, okay? We have the anchorage, which is the lower arch, the whole lower arch, and we have the uh, active uh, component, which is the elastic. Um, let's look now in the occlusal view, okay? This is how it looks in the occlusal view. As you may see from the picture, there's a, a bonded retainer on the upper arch that comes from first phase of treatment and that has no relationship with the genius sagittal first. You don't need those uh, upper bonded retainers, wire retainer on the top arch. It's just there, so I left it there. That's all. Uh, I probably have, uh, it's probably been removed in the later stage of treatment once all the brackets have been bonded. Okay. So you can see now the genius first, uh, sagittal first on the um, upper right corner. Uh, this is the way it goes. It goes backwards. It goes distally, of course. Uh, you don't, cannot forget there is a toe in, in, um, that is built in the tube, so that will help the molar to, to derotate, and this derotation help in to achieving class one and class two correction. This is the lower arch. Uh, if you have a nice plastic retainer, uh, uh, polyacrylic plastic retainer, there will be no secondary effect on the molar that serves as anchorage on which the tube is bonded, okay? And once you get the class one, once you get the class one, then your patient is ready for genius compressive treatment. You just have to remove 
the, the segment, you just have to remove the plastic retainer and you burn all your brackets to finish the treatment. Let's go have a look to this uh, new case. In this new case, we have very slight incisor crowding, moderate deep bite. Uh, you, can, you could get some lower incisor, slight lower incisor protrusion. The class two is again four millimeters, but I can assure you that it works the same with a six millimeter uh, class two occlusion. I will show later somewhere. <coughs> some. This is the patient which has, who ha whom has a, a convex profile. From the profile X-ray, we can uh, <coughs> see that the patient, the mandible is backwards. Uh, lower incisor of protrusion that we could guess from the occlusal picture. Uh, low, sorry, from the, it's not FFMA, of course, you've guessed it's FMA value. And from the vertebra analysis, Bacchetti, uh, the patient is at stage CS4, which means that is right, right beyond the growth spurt, right after. So we should hurry. We cannot wait to have have uh, rectangular stainless steel wires. We cannot wait nine more months or 12 more months to correct the class two. We have to correct it now. So that's why sagittal first is very, very useful. <clears throat> so this is what I've shown you before. No change. Uh, uh, in this particular case, as you could see, I've chosen to bond the button and not the tube on the lower arch, but actually bonding a tube is more useful because then you can use it for the full treatment afterwards. And one millimeter per month, in four months, done, the, class two the class two was correct, okay? Works really nice, both sides. And one more month, why one more month? To get some hypercorrection, if possible. When you have a good patient, uh, it's, it's, re it's really possible. So you get some hypercorrection. One millimeter is enough. We, as you could see, we have space opening between the, the upper incisors. And we also have the bite correction. Let me come back to show you that the patient has some moderate deep bite. OK? I will come up, up, up. OK? So this is the wire I use. I take an 18 by 25 thermal ultra. Uh, why is that? Because this wire I found, even though we are using heavy elastics, is rigid enough to bear elastic wear. And it's also resilient enough if there's a canine rotation and you want to um, insert your wire into your canine bracket, OK? Also, what, uh, because of the elasticity of the wire, if uh, the patient uh, would eat something uh, hard, uh, then the wire, as you know, may, will temporarily deform and come back to, re to its original position. So it's much better than a, a stainless steel wire. Okay, so K9, prim first premolar, second premolar, molar. This is the segment you are using, okay? That's all. Uh, this red arrow will just show that that is the secondary effect on the canine from the elastic wear. Be but I can promise that the, the wire is rigid enough and that you will have no secondary effect on the canine, which means, as you could see on the cases actually, there was absolutely no labial position of the canine or rotation of the canine. Okay, so this is the case before. So let's see that in the wire segment, you have to block, you have to block the wire segment so that it, it doesn't slide. Otherwise your patient would come back three days after the appointment. So I block it visually to the canine and I have here a spring, which is the length of, uh, uh, which, which is not activated. And there's also a little stop here that will prevent the wire from sliding forward. And here, there's a little bit of a little a little, a little bit of wire out distally of the tube, 
because of the rotation of the molars and the coil spring and the stop, the stop is activated actually like a millimeter and a half. So this will allow the, the, the tube to move a little bit distally, okay? Um, very easy fabrication. So as I said, the stop prevents the wire from sliding forward and activate the coil spring one millimeter to optimize molar rotation uh, because we have a built-in towing into the tube. And it takes five minutes to fabricate, really five minutes. It's very, 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 very easy. This is after the four months, as you could see, there's a molar rotation, space opening, you know that there's a class one, I've shown you the pictures, okay? And these are the elastics I'm using. So it's the opposite of the shortest elastics, okay? They are very heavy. The shortest elastics I've shown earlier were two ounces. Those elastics are four, more than four times heavier, okay? This is very important to use heavy elastics. If you don't see results, in your cases, if you try this, it means there are, there are sometimes, it means that the patient is not wearing the elastics all the time. Or, or, or the second molar is not a problem. On teenagers, the wisdom teeth, the upper wisdom teeth are not a problem. You don't have to remove them. On adults, you could have some problems. Adults, sometimes they have very dense bone and they have also, um, a lot of strength in the occlusion at night. So adults, if you use those elast these concepts on adults, you should have their with the, the, the maxillary wisdom teeth removed. And if there is no uh, improvement into the in the class two relationship after two to three months, it means that you have to go with you, you can double those elastics at night, for example, and also you have to open the bite. Uh, with some back tubers or whatever you want to free the occlusion that will impede the class to correction. But for teenagers, it works 100% uh, of the time. If it doesn't work for teenagers, it means that they don't wear the elastic symbols. That's very easy, okay? This was a patient. And uh, uh, to talk about the space opening between the upper incisors, uh, the space opening is due to distalization of the uh, upper maxillary segments uh, and also uh, from, comes from the pressure of lower incisors, okay? Because there could, be a, there could be a lot of pressure because of the mandible forward positioning. Uh, and there's also a deep bite correction, which is nice. So basically, once you're done with your four to six months of fur, uh, phase one treatment, you don't have much thing to do, okay? This is the panoramic x-ray, okay? You, you could see that the, wis the, the wisdom teeth are here, of course. Uh, the upper wisdom teeth are here and uh, the upper second molars, uh, I don't care about those, right? And uh, what's nice also, you can, uh, you can see that there's not too much um, uh, distal tipping of the molars uh, and uh, that uh, there is no distal tipping at all of the canines. Okay, uh, because part of the correction is coming from mandibular growth or mandibular anterior repositioning. That's why we don't see much uh, side effects on the maxillary segments. Uh, this is the profile x-ray. Uh, remember that there's only been uh, those, those profile x-ray uh, are uh, seven months apart. So you cannot expect um, with seven months, you cannot expect a lot, a lot of change in growth, okay? But still, uh, if, you, if I look at the A and B, which is not the most reliable measurement, but uh, this is a reliable measurement, especially in that kind of uh, uh, convergent uh, uh, patient, there's been an improvement of uh, two. Uh, in, okay. So genius sagittal first for class two correction. Six first month of treatment. 
heavy interaction elastics with mandibular anchorage. I don't use the, uh, there was a time they were using lingual arch. Uh, I don't like it much because I think there is less control on the lower inside the top with the uh, 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 lingual arch. So the plastic um, retainer is very, very nice because really you get, you get some control on your lower inside the talk. So the class two correction, which is a millimeter per month, is uh, uh, you distalize four to five teeth, canine to molars. You get rotation or upper first molars, as I've shown, because of the toe-in built-in tube and because of the cold spring. And you get some mandibular repositioning and we, know, we all hope it's growth. Uh, as a side effect, you get some extrusion of the upper canines. Uh, it's very e easy to catch up with the brackets on all your teeth afterwards. You get some correction of the deep bite, um, which I think comes from uh, clockwise rotation of the mandible. And you get top control of lower incisors because of the mandibular courage with the plastic, re plastic retainer. It holds very, very well the lower incisors. Uh, actually, I'm, I may, may go back to... Uh, this uh, profile x-ray uh, we had um, IMPA uh, IMPA was uh, was 116 and it didn't change at all it couldn't change so basically we have the same effect as the carrier motion but what are the advantages of the genius sagittal first over carrier motion first of all carrier motion is a rigid appliance. So if you have canine rotation more than 10 degrees, it's going to be difficult to bond or it's going to be even sometimes impossible if the rotation is more than uh, uh, is more than 15 degrees. So you have 80 by 25 thermal ultra wire, even if the canine is rotated, then it's no longer a problem. Uh, I thought that there was a uh, much less breakage or debonding with the genius sagittal first than with the carrier motion. Uh, the genius sagittal first is very easily followed by full genius treatment because you just have to remove the segment, the upper segment, and you bond the other bracket. You already have your upper canines and your molars that are bonded, the first molars that are bonded. It's much cheaper. Uh, there is no stock with different sizes. There's no less need for replacement because there, there, is, there are less breakage and depending. Um, for class three correction, it's the same. Uh, there are a little bit of differences. Of course, the anchorage will, will be in the upper uh, arch. Um, the class three, sorry, it's written class two correction. I'm sorry about this mistake. It's class three correction. It's uh, it's uh, twice as difficult, which means that you're going to observe 0.5 millimeter per month. Uh, and uh, you got extrusion of the lower canines and the counterclockwise rotation of the mandible. So uh, this counterclockwise rotation of the mandible is not what we are especially looking at when we try to correct class three relationship. It, we try to have the opposite, but still in the sagittal, uh, dimension, uh, it works fine, um, and you got good control, good, good torque control of our upper incisors because of maximum anchorage with the plastic retainer. But in my opinion, uh, the sagittal uh, first with genius uh, for class three correction is for no more than two millimeters or 2.5 millimeters of class three. Of uh, um, Beyond three millimeters of class three, I'm not sure we'd recommend uh, to use this kind of appliance. Maybe rather go for surgery or help, help yourself with micro implants. Uh, <clears throat> I, will, I would like to show you now um, class three in mixed dentition. Uh, this is a different topic. Uh, I will not use genius sagittal first. I would use a different approach. Um, I just wanted to show you this, this case. Okay. So you can see a very uh, deficiency, uh, a huge deficiency of the maxillary uh, arch. 
and the cross bite uh, anterior with the bite actually and also posterior um, <clears throat> there's a, there is a lack of space for the eruption of the upper lateral incisors because of the maxillary deficiency here is the profile uh, views of the occlusal relationship of course uh, you can uh, see some class free relationship this is the panoramic that shows uh, some um, uh, the lack of space for the eruption of the upper laterals. This is the profile X-ray, which is a little bit off. I'm sorry, and the mandible, as you can see, the patient has moved. I'm sorry about this. Um, and the patient, of course, I'm sure he has a slide. Oops. There is a, a forward uh, component of um, the mandible slides that's that's uh, that's that's for sure uh because i've noticed so what we do in this kind of case um we i will di directly start with uh, genius brackets uh i will bond the two arches at the same time uh the the, the size of the wire doesn't really matter what mat uh, you can Watch, you can see that there are some open coil springs to make more room for the, the eruption of the upper lateral incisors. Those coil springs will close the upper diastema. The frenum is very thick, by the way. Uh, and, um, and this will help also in moving the upper incisors, the upper central incisors forward. What's very, very important and most important here in that those cross bites, I will use some bite blocks on the uh, lingual surface of the lower central incisor. That will open the bite and will allow a different positioning of the mandible. And uh, just with this kind of uh, uh, procedure, with the genius brackets from the beginning and the bite blocks, and we all also have used some very light class three elastics. We were able in 16 months to uh, uh, get this result. Um, I want to come back to uh, one for slide, please, to uh, show you that in the upper arch on the upper uh, central incisors, and we did the same for the upper lateral incisors, the brackets have been bonded reverse which means that we have a negative torque on the upper central incisors to compensate um, the, 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 the action of the coil springs that tend to move the upper incisors labially. Okay so the, the success of the, the, this treatment has very much to do with uh, the brackets, with the slide elastics, and with the anterior bite blocks. And the anterior bite blocks were not useful at the three month of treatment because the patient was already edge to edge. And what we did actually is that we correct the class three relationship and we also uh, have, uh, there was no uh, forward slide of the mandible anymore. There was no rapid parallel expander, only the genius bracket that would expand the arch. And this is a profile x-ray. Uh, it's very di difficult to make an assessment of the correction because the patient was, uh, was sliding uh, forward. But of course, this patient is a class 3 tendency. Uh, there is no doubt about uh, this, even though the class 2 looked uh, more, sorry, more important than it was because of the mandible uh, slide fall. Uh, I would like to end up with a, a patient which is uh, <clears throat> it's no class, it's, it's not a class three, it's not a, it's not a class two, it's, it's a patient in between everything. Um, this patient, uh, his name Lee, is, uh, is uh, 13 years old and he comes at the office. And of course, uh, the, the main, um, this is a profile x-ray. And the profile x-ray shows it has a very, very slight 
uh, incisor by protrusion. Uh, talking with the patient and the parents, they were um, they were not bothered by this uh, by this um, in incisor and lip slight protrusion. Uh, they didn't ask for any change in those relationship. Uh, you can see from this profile X-ray that, that there is divergence of the mandible, uh, so it's ten is a uh, long face, and also class three tendency. Uh, the, here, this uh, I asked the dentist to uh, to check this smaller, and uh, this smaller ended up with an endodontic treatment. And here is the patient. Uh, on this frontal and the lateral view. Um, so the patient basically just show a uh, very slight, a, a class two relationship of the canines on the right side because of, um, but it's not a real class two because actually the molars are in class one. And there's a lack of space for uh, the upper lateral incisor, upper right lateral incisor, which is in cross bite. So here, you, you can easily guess that from the beginning on the 014 thermal ultra, we use the open cold spring to open the space to make the space for the upper right lateral incisor, and that will help bring the canine into class one relationship. I would like to show you this. Uh, the challenge here is here. Uh, what is the challenge? From the occlusal view, without any cone beam, you could easily guess, even if you, if you put your finger on your palate, on the palate, that the not only the crown of the upper left, upper right lateral incisor, not only the crown is lingual, but also the root. So the whole tooth is is uh, is parallel, and uh, I, we all know it's easy to create space. We all know it's easy to align a crown, but we also, of course, have to move the root forward. So once we have created the space for uh, the uh, the upper left, uh, the upper right, sorry, lateral incisor, we move the crown forward with a, a 014 wire, but only the crown. The root will be left behind uh, in the palate. As you can see here, we can easily guess that the root of the upper right lateral incisor is still palatal. But this root, as you can also guess from the occlusal view, is coming forward. How is that? Very easily, you reverse the, the bracket here. You reverse the bracket. Why is that? Just to have a negative torque. So you just have to wait to have a, a heavy, uh, to have a, a, a rectangular wire which is uh, large enough to have action on the on the root uh, you can also see that the bonding was pretty high to compensate for the long face and uh, also to for the patient to keep um, good uh, exposure of his upper incisor upon smiling This is uh, before and after, not much change. Um, sorry, and see, this is before and after. Um, the level of the gum is mostly dependent of the inclination of the root. The more forward the root is, the higher the gum is. Here, it's about the same level which mean about, which means that the forward movement of the root worked pretty well. Maybe it could be even a little bit better, but it worked pretty well. And this is before and after. Of course, extractions were possible here if one wanted to change the profile. Now, uh, I hope you can. Uh, all apply this in your office zap uh, as soon as possible. Uh, I know that uh, uh, watching a, um, a webinar 
lecture on your screen is a little bit like uh, uh, this guy watching some gym. And uh, I would like to thank you very much for attending to. Uh, now it's time for us to take uh, aperitivo before lunchtime. We are all confining. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank you very much uh, for attending to this lecture. Now I can answer questions if uh, possible. Thank you so How much, Dr. Emmerich. Uh, yes, the questions are at the Q&A section. Uh, yes. OK, I can I can uh, watch those. OK, very easy. Uh, I know, how carry a motion correct molar rotation? There is, if you know carry a motion, carry a motion has a ball joint on the molar tube. And this help, this, the, 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 you can watch on the internet, on YouTube, there are a lot of, uh, of uh, YouTube videos about carrier and you can see easily how it's been designed and it helps and, and, and so the molar will rotate. And how the genius sagittal first correct molar rotation, it's very easy. When you clip the stop, when you clip the stop, then it will activate the coil spring one millimeter and this activation of one millimeter will push the molar back. And uh, because there is a, a, a clearance between the wire and the, and the tube, and also because of the toe-in built in the tube, it will help the molar to derotate. Uh, the size and force of heavy elastics used on, on carrier appliance. I think I've shown this, uh, uh, I have shown this, uh, the force. And, uh, and uh, the, the, from what I understand, the lecture has been re uh, recorded, so you can watch over the lecture and uh, it will show. And the, the, the force is at 8.5 uh, ounces. Um, uh, yes, for class 3 mixed dentition case, upper distributed canines were bonded. Any chance it will exfoliate because of the force of cold spring? Um, what happens is that sometimes, not all the time, because of the, of the force applies, applied on baby canines, they tend to exfoliate towards the end of treatment. Yes, it happens. And uh, the 16-month treatment, what are the wire ch size changes? Uh, I always go through this kind of sequence. It's 014 um, thermal ultra. They're all thermal ultra wires. 014 then 18 by 18, then 18 by 25, then I would go to TMA um, or uh, uh, beta titanium wires uh, or even stainless steel wires, uh, for example. These are the three questions. Any other questions? Oh, yes, many. Okay, uh, sorry. Um, in class three skeletal, when you use spring one arch wire, why we need to invert the upper interior brackets when we use the spring? Of, of course, uh, one wire will not do anything, anything with torque. We all agree with this. But I don't want to change my bracket, and I know that I'm gonna, uh, with my sequence, go to some heavier rectangular wire, and then I will be able to have some action on the torque. So I would, from the beginning, uh, when I know from the beginning which roots have to be moved forward, I would use negative torque and reverse the bracket. Uh, okay, thank you for your lovely lecture, Doc, and thank you very much for the compliment. <laughs> Adult with class two can treat with carrier or genius as what I just did. Well, you can you can use geni genius sagittal uh, first. With adults, uh, there is no limit of age. As I said, um, sometimes the the, the 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 bone is a little bit more dense on adults, so it requires extraction of wisdom teeth, and also requires um, bite blocks to uh, open the bite, and it also requires more force. So you can double elastic throughout more than eight ounces. You can have like ten to twelve ounces at night. For example, 
it works, let's say, four times out of five. I wouldn't say that I have like 100% results with uh, this type of uh, sagittal correction on adults. But um, four times out of five, I can correct up to six to seven millimeters of class two, which is wow. It's very good in six to nine months. Really, it's unbelievable. Um, the mandibular splint includes all the teeth that are present, all the teeth in the mouth, okay? And the mandibular splint on kids, uh, you have to change, unfortunately, every two to three months because they break, they wear it all the time. So you took another impression or another scan and you do another one. You have to expect that, okay? That's the price to pay. But, but in the end, no secondary effect on the lower molar, okay? No rotation, no tipping, and in the end, very nice torque control on the lower incisors. Very good. Mandible splint, excellent. Uh, um, uh, yes, so we do cover everything that is possible with the clear retainer. Ah, c, c, the, -ce que c w s'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît. C w is clockwise, uh, dans le sens horaire. Donc, euh, ouverture, euh, I will answer in French, if you may. C'est, euh, voilà, donc, ouverture dans le sens des aiguilles d'une montre, euh, lorsqu'on regarde une téléradiographie de profil. Voilà. In a class 2 with reasonable upper incisor alignment, would you put a clear liner on the upper to increase the internal courage? Ah, the class 3, sorry. With reasonable upper incisor alignment, would you put a clear liner on the upper to increase the upper courage? To push lower six back and discipline models at the same time. Yes, one scanline and more into class one with straight upon, with straight bond upper lower with brackets with short is continuous support. Exactly. Once you have finished with sagittal, genius sagittal first, you remove the segment, you remove the plastic splint, you bond all your brackets immediately. Uh, you try to have one millimeter hyper correction and you use some short is at night, at night, that's enough. And you watch if it's enough or not, okay? Yes, exactly, thank you. And what I would like to say, because I've shown you before that six month treatment is not maybe enough to see some on teenagers, a uh, huge scholarial correction. But if you ask your patient to wear elastic at night after, it will help keep on working on mandibular growth. Uh, could you explain more about the cold spring and the stopper used in Genius SF? Yes, I can. Listen to me. When you insert the segment with the cold spring, the cold spring between the distal of the upper canine and the mesial of the upper molar is passive. Okay? Passive. Then on the first or the second appointment, as you wish, you will insert this toe to the canine. You will clip the stop. When you clip the stop, what it will do, it will activate the cold screen one and a half millimeter, which, is, which will only rotate the molar as you expect. That's all, very easy, okay? But you can use passive if you wish. It's, so just one millimeter difference, it's no big deal. Could you explain more about the cold screen? And, okay, I did it. Uh, what is the wire sequence for using short, shortest elastics on? Okay, or one for two months or four months. Uh, if you have a lot of crowding, heavy crowding, okay, you can go to 018 thermal ultra at the third or the fourth month. At the sixth month or the fourth month, depends on the case. I like to go on 18 by 18 thermal ultra. You are still, the patient is still wearing the shorties the same way. Two months after, 18 by 25 thermal ultra. And, uh, and this, uh, this uh, and then at that time, you can use the shorties, <coughs> baseball elastics. They're a little bit, uh, a uh, little bit more strain and go from three to six. Mm. 
someone is i'm gonna say in english this is french um, french and um, so someone asked me why not with the distal bend uh, plier bend the wire back uh distal to the motor of course you can do so of course um but if you use 18 by 25, if you have a bent mesial to the mole, uh, canine and the stop, the wire won't go anywhere. So you don't need to bend. But you can, of course. But if you bend, you bend, of course, a little bit, uh, one millimeter back or two millimeters back to the molar so that, um, so that, uh, so that your molar can uh, derotate. Uh, why do you open the biting class two case? Because it will increase class two only for some demand. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't want to open the biting class two case. I don't want to. It just happens. <laughs> you know, when you use class two elastics, unless you use a ten two with hypo headgear uh, or micro implants, uh, micro screws, you will you will have a tendency to open the bite. So. Uh, uh, if you have a deep bite, if you have a deep bite, you want to open the posterior bite, unless your deep bite is associated with gummy smile. In that particular case, I would rather look at uh, correcting the deep bite with upper incisor intrusion. But if you have a gummy smile, you may use some micro screws. I hope I answer the question. Um, so opening the bite with genius sagittal first is a side effect that you don't want for your class two correction, although your class two correction works as you have seen, but, and it will help uh, correcting the deep bite. Okay, I hope I answered the question. Uh, how do we approach those cases that need expansion in genius sagittal first? Okay, so that is, you, you take care first of, uh, of sagittal first, correct the class two, then, uh, then you will have your expansion in the second phase of treatment with uh, the genius brackets and the sequence of wires you you use uh, you use uh, you, you use uh, on, ordinarily. Um, um, Doctor Carrier says that even though he has a cross bite, he would use first the gen genius sagittal. Uh, uh, first, and then correct the cross bite. Okay. Uh, I would like to. Uh, I would like to ask the bite tubules, as the bite tubules on molar and the incisor, like the dimension and position to places. How long we keep it? Uh, can we use bite tubules on primary region, doctor? Okay. So it's easy. The 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 bite tubules. The main rule is the the following. First of all, you can use you cannot use bitubules on the incisors if you have an overjet, which makes logic, right? So you will use bitubules on the inside in the incisors on the parallel of incisors if you don't have overjet, and uh, and if your case is not a high angle case, if your case is a high angle case then you rather use some poster, posterior bite blocks to intrude the molars. I hope I, I try to answer the question. This is, this is a, a topic I address in a one day lecture. Uh, if one, one day um, we have the chance to meet for one day lecture with me, uh, but this is difficult to explain here. Um, I, will, I, will try, I will try to answer in writing to all your questions, okay? Um, but there are many, many, many. Um, can we upgrade the wire during using shorties at the beginning of treatment until class one relationship is reached? Of course, you can upgrade the wire sequence uh, even though you still don't have the class one. Of course, of course, of course. Because you keep on aligning your teeth, you don't lose time. Um, for, for class uh, class two elastics, how long time we use the the eight ounces elastics until you get the class one. So six months, nine months, four months, as long as you need. Uh, 
question has been asked for my asymmetric soar. Um, for the first case I've shown with a, a premolar bracket, uh, I, I used the, uh, because there was one case, there was only one canine available, the other canine was impacted. So uh, I will answer, type it, I will type the answer. Of course, we can use posterior bite block with the Genius SF, of course. In class two, division two, we change canine from class two to class one, and we open the deep bite with a uh, using. Yes, we open the deep bite only using the carrier. I, I, I didn't encounter lower molar extrusion with class two elastics in teenagers because of um, because of the plastic splint that 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 holds the molar pretty well. Can, can this technique be used together with anterior segmental wires? Yes. But I don't feel it's necessary, honestly. Uh, unless you have a patient that is very, uh, uh, an adult patient that doesn't want any space opening of the upper incisors, there are some. Uh, it will have all the space opening between the lateral incisor and the canines. Uh, uh, okay, there are many, many questions. Uh, I will, uh, I will, uh, uh, we are getting to the end of our presentation. I will, I will type the, I will type right now all the answers for, I hope you all have your answers by, by writing. Okay. Uh, any other thing I can do for you? Christina, Dr. Christina? Dr. Yes. Sir. So far, um, questions have been answered. I think, yes, we still do have a lot of questions from the participants. It's a very, very interesting lecture. Thank yeah. you, Dr. Henrik. Um, do you still have a few minutes to answer some more or how do you choose to answer the remaining questions? Yes, please, please, can you, uh, can you, uh, can you choose, uh, can you choose some questions I will answer? Choose for me. All right. Let me go through some of the questions. Dr. Pham, can you take a look also? Okay. Dr. Emmerich, there is a question uh, by Dr. Dennis. What is the size of the lower clear splint? Uh, in my opinion, 0 0.5 is uh, too weak. It will break very, very, very shortly. And uh, uh, one millimeter split is okay. It's okay. But sometimes it's not comfortable for the patient. So I would say if you have a scan, if you have a scan, uh, maybe you, you get, you're going to get some precision, then, then you, you can fabricate a one millimeter thickness splint. If you don't have a scan, I would go for uh, 0, um, 0.75. OK, thank you. Uh, there's one question. After you digitalize the upper six in the class two case, do you retain it with TPA as you fully band or bond up to the case? No, I don't. I don't retain with TPA because usually I I like to ex, I, I like to expand my archers and uh, I usually do so with the Genius system. Uh, also, uh, um, no, no, I no, no, no. I, I just maintain the result uh, with uh, some short tease elastics at night. Okay, there are questions about. Okay, go ahead, ma'am. Okay, Dr. Emig, I have a question. Uh, something that I read in the comments. How about relapse for class two correction with the genius sagittal first appliance? What kind of relapse do you encounter and how do you control it or correct it? Okay, uh, my treatment doesn't end with the genius sagittal first. Uh, the, you have to, uh, this is a very good question. Uh, all questions are very good and this one particularly uh, because you have to uh, start genius sagittal first in order to be able to go with full genius uh, treatment as soon as you finish with genius sagittal first. Then you will ask your patient to wear elastics at night for let's say one more year of treatment, maybe a year and a half. I don't know how long it's gonna be your treatment, nine months, but this 
period of time will be the stabilization time so there is, there is zero relapse but if the patient is still growing after you finish comprehensive treatment how would you manage that i'm sorry patient is still growing after comprehensive treatment yes so for me it's more it's more a question about class three than class two because what happens is that with the the, the whether it's growth or whether it's class two or whether it's mandibular repositioning the class one we get with a good sucking class one doesn't relapse at all so it's also getting the proper occlusion the teeth in proper yes, occlusion to help. getting the proper occlusion yeah it's getting the proper occlusion and having your patient wear class one <coughs> sorry uh, class two elastics uh, at night to maintain the result okay but all, yeah, yeah. all I, I, to be honest to be honest uh, half half of the patient listen to this half of the patient I asked to wear elastics at night with the full genius brackets in the mouth. Half of them, after five to six months, asked to ask them to stop completely because they are going to a class three relationship. So really, I think it's a really, it really, it's really stable. All right. So this is this is. I'm sorry. This is very, very, very clinical insight. Mm -hmm. it, it, this is not scientific at all. I'm sorry about my answer, but I, I'm not sure there are there. There must be Dr. Kaya's article. Some, <coughs> some uh, is using for a long time this kind of concept. Some so uh, answers about on stability. Case, case basis, right? I'm sorry. It's also on a case to case basis. Our treatment decisions, whether or not. Yes. Yes. Plastics. Yes. But I thought it was. I, I thought it was very very stable. What I like, you know. What I didn't like about in my previous technique when I was using class two elastics only at the last stages of treatment is that you correct the class two in the last six months of treatment is very short time and then the treatment is uh, ended with the class one achievement and you don't have time to see if it will relapse or not. Here you correct the class two in the first stages of treatment and your treatment keep on so you have the time to adjust your elastic wear and see what's going on with the patient. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Emmerich. Um, there's a question here. Can we combine TADS for class two correction for genius sagittal yeah. first elastic attachment? Okay, let's let's say one month only, only, only uh mandibular growth, then you could uh, you could combine uh Tads in the in the lower, for example, does it that would work? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean that would work. And in the upper for the vertical, maybe. Of course, for the vertical dimension. Okay. I'm not sure for 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 the sagittal dimension. It has, uh, it's really useful. Dr. Emmick, regarding the beveled bite blocks on the premolars, uh, question here from Dr. Wang. What shape should they be like? Like, uh, exactly, uh, like the shape of the, uh, the bite block from the acrylic from McNamara. They are slopes like this, uh, and, uh, or like the, like the wings from, um, from Invisalign. If you look at the wings from Invisalign, it's exactly the shape you are looking at. Exactly the same one. Small with a glass unimer. It's it, it, usually what, what you do, you, you make some, uh, you, 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 you sculpt them with a burr. Okay. Okay. Any more questions, Dr. Loretta? Let's take a look. Some of them have written their questions in the chat portion, but I told them to place their questions in the Q&A. I think so far uh, we've addressed mo most of the questions. Dr. Emmerich, 
do you have any uh, parting words for us? Are we going to see you again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you mean the webinars or uh, or uh, in real life? Both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I really hope so. I, re I really hope so. I, I, I want to thank everyone for attending, for listening, for asking very, very good questions. I, I, re I really want you to to uh, to try this uh, in your office. I was it, I can I, I like this lecture because this is this concept changed a lot my practice, and uh, uh, really it's something that made it very easy and uh, very rewarding. Very re rewarding, really, really. So I hope you will. Uh, has the same feeling that right. me. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> Thank you everybody, so much. everybody's raring to get back to their practices. We just have to wait until the threat of COVID is over. Yes. <laughs> I, I did learn a lot. Thank you very much. It's something you're I welcome. would thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. I hope we have the chance to talk about it uh, and have your feedbacks, all of you. In a way, in a certain way, okay? Okay, I say bye to everyone. Thank you and, so uh, much, Dr. Emmerich. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Fe Christina Loretta. Bye-bye. Yeah. Everyone, Fe thank you for attending. Fe stay yes. well. Okay. Everybody stay well. Stay well, yeah. Stay at home. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, Doc Fem. Thank you again Bye. to DDM. Oh, thank, thank you, Christina. Call. Thank you, Fem. Thank you, everyone. Welcome. Yes, thank you, Dr. Emmerich. I will get in touch with you right after this. And uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you all. Bye. Bye, Dr. Fem. Bye, Dr. Emmerich. Thank you. Bye, Dr. Emmerich. Bye.